Hey everyone, I'm Andy Raffel from eTenix.com and today we've got another memory kit to review in our offices. This is the A-Pacer Panther Rage RGB. Now A-Pacer aren't exactly shy when it comes to extreme designs and some people are either going to really love it, others may think it's a little bit garish. So really this is going to be, I think, quite a subjective video, but obviously we are going to talk about performance, overclockability and a lot more as well. So let's jump in and take a look at this 16 gigabyte kit. The A-Pacer Panther Rage RGB comes in two color choices, either black or gold. Now, I think the gold looks a little bit like puke, but that is just me. And this is obviously gonna come down to personal preference. Obviously, some emerging markets may find that the gold is a lot nicer to look at. It does have a stamped Metal Panther motif on the heatsink, and this, to again, some people is going to look amazing, unique and stylish, or quite garish and terrible. It is very much a matter of opinion but it is obviously the most prominent feature on the memory. The logo and the branding are polished and reflective, and it does look great in a system. It reflects the surrounding system lighting very nicely indeed. Based on the promo videos and the product pages, a pacer are really trying to push the look of this memory, but make no mistake, the performance is there to back up the marketing, and high-end gamers will get exactly what they need. The heat spreaders on the memory modules are fairly low profile and they don't add much extra weight. But is it style over substance? We don't think it is because just to give you a bit of a spoiler, the overclocking performance on this was absolutely fantastic and we will get to that later on in the video. This just kind of proves that the heat spreader does a great job. Now going back to the design, you'll see that there are various LEDs on the top. They feature a sawtooth design that looks sort of jagged and cool, and they give the modules an offbeat symmetry that works really well. I've never seen any design like this from a Pacer or any other brand for that matter. The LEDs are full RGB, and they support Aura Sync, which means that it will work with non-Azus boards, but you have to use the Azus Aura Sync software to get the full lighting control. Obviously through the ASUS Aura Sync software, it does give you full control over the RGB, including the plethora of different lighting effects that come included in the software. The RGB simply looks awesome when it's powered on. Again, the jagged glass-like style of the LEDs comes out very well. It is worth noting as well that A-Pacer have teamed up with ASUS Tough Gaming to design a new edition of this memory, featuring the camouflage design that we're used to due to the Tough Gaming Alliance. So let's talk a little bit more about the specs. Now this memory comes in various capacities and various speeds. Talking about the speeds, it comes in at 2400 megahertz, 26, 28, 3000, and also the kit that we have here today, the 3200 megahertz kit. Capacity wise, it's available in eight gig, 16 gig, and 32 gigabyte SKUs for a potential max of 128 gigabytes. The 3200 megahertz kit that we have here today is a dual channel 16 gigabyte kit, which is probably the most common one that people will go and buy. All of these kits are overclockable on Intel XMP 2.0 without manual BIOS adjustments. Obviously that's not to say that they won't work on the AMD platform, but XMP just makes it a little bit easier. On the kit that we have here today, which is again the 16 gigabyte 3200 megahertz kit, the timings are 16, 18, 18, 38, and they operate at 1.35 volts. So before we get into the benchmarks, we wanna talk about overclocking because we did say at the start of this video, is this memory more kind of style over substance? We'd be pleased to know that it's not. This is a 3200 megahertz kit of stock and we managed to get it up to 3900 megahertz while keeping the timings on auto and we also played a little bit with the voltages. Now, the first step that we actually took was to take our processor, and load the five gigahertz profile. This will just open up the memory bandwidth uh, just that little bit so we could maybe push the memory a little bit further than we would be able to if the processor was at stock. Now, while we did do that, it did set a few of the voltages such as system agent and also the DRAM to its own profiles. And we found that we could actually tweak them a little bit more. So what we did is we managed to go back into the BIOS and we set the voltages just that little bit lower. So we actually managed to drop the voltage in the memory from 1.35 volts to 1.31 volts. Now, even though the timings were on auto, they did manage to set themselves to 17, 17, 17, 39. Now, I'm sure you'll actually agree that these are some fantastic results. Being able to clock it from 3200 megahertz to 3900 megahertz, whilst keeping the timings 
pretty much, you know, stock and the voltage. I mean, we actually managed to decrease the voltage from its stock 1.35. So now that we've got that out of the way, let's take a look at the performance results at both stock and overclocked. So based on the performance, you can see that in certain tests it did really well, in other tests maybe not so well, which was actually pretty surprising for a kit that's operating at 3200 MHz with pretty tight timings. Even when we managed to overclock it to 3900 MHz, it still wasn't really stoking the competition that much, which, you know, like I say, is pretty surprising. I'm not saying it's a bad kit by no means. I mean, you can see for yourself, it looks absolutely amazing. With all of those different lighting effects, but it is gonna be down to personal preference. Some people are going to love the design of this. Some people are honestly going to think it's a little bit garish, but that's really down to personal preference. If this isn't your cup of tea, it is worth looking at A-Pace's other lineup of memory where they have got so much more to offer. Maybe something that's a little bit more subtle. Price-wise, you're gonna be looking at around 189 pounds in the UK. Sadly, there's no US pricing at the moment because A-Pacer do struggle a little bit with distribution in some of the mainstream markets. But that's not to say that it's not going to be coming at a later date. In my opinion, if I was going to get this memory, it would have to be for the right system. It would have to be in a system that the design works. But performance-wise, it's not quite run of the mill, maybe a little bit higher than that, but I was just expecting something a little bit more. But fair play to A-Pacer for doing something a little bit more unique. It's nice to see something that kind of breaks the boundaries of typical memory design. So fair play to them for that. Other than that, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, you know what to do. Smash that like button, comment below, and I'll see you in the next video. See you later.